And that's what Ric Flair said. And then he cried because he couldn't compete with the likes of that. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, and himself, I think. But honestly, who can? No. <laughs> that was quite the trail off there. That was quite the trail off. I was trying to think of something great he did recently. <laughs> Ric Flair? Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's. I think he. He stayed with this. I think he's been with this wife for like four years or there something. Go. That's got to be a record. Yeah, it's got to be pretty damn close to a record. Threatened to sue WWE for the the man. Yep, and then they're just like, well, we'll just sign you to another contract. And he's like, all right, you can have it. You can have it. Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, and the new baby. That's two and a half men, right? Um, I mean, not if it's a woman. Well, men being humans. Humans Two and a half humans? Like one giant leap for mankind. I don't think they were talking about strictly men. Maybe at that point. Actually, yeah, they were. Back. <laughs> There's no way they were letting a woman up in space at that time. Pasty. Come on. Come on. Uh, yeah. It's, oh, uh, it's, it's been a week. Yeah. Yeah. Weeks come and weeks go. And this one's been kind of, um, other than, other than, um, negative news not a lot of news of, of anything really going on but especially in the pro wrestling world um not a positive hopefully it goes out with a bang and we have an amazing pay-per-view to end this kind of rough week in pro wrestling if it, as if pro wrestling just hasn't had it rough enough <laughs> right yeah you know yeah, as we get into the news it's definitely not looking positive Unless you're NWA, that Carnyland special was pretty awesome. Oh, so much fun! It's the kind of it's the kind of stuff I like, and the kind of stuff a lot of people don't. And I completely, completely, completely understand it. Mm-hmm. I I wouldn't fault anybody for not only disliking this stuff but loathing it. You know, you gotta be able to be like uh, enjoy like Southpaw Regional Wrestling and DDT Pro Wrestling and Old Memphis Wrestling and Chikara Pro Wrestling. It's you got to kind of be into that stuff. And if you're not, you're just really not going to enjoy it. And that's okay because there's so much wrestling for people to choose from right now. Yeah, so much and none at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so much wrestling, not enough good wrestling going on. I yeah. feel myself falling further and further away from it. And I'm like, God damn, what the hell am I doing podcasting about this stuff? Well, it could be good though. No more. It gives you. It's kind of like when you're judging, when you're judging a taste, uh, a food tasting. You know, between each sample, you clean your palate with with some water, and then you know, completely refresh yourself. And that's kind of, I think, a good spot for wrestling fans right now. To, I mean, you can either force yourself into it, and uh, like getting a toothy blowjob. You're just like, well, you know, I. I kind of want it, so I'm just going to force myself to accept it. You know, and you deal with the chafing for three days afterwards. Or, and you can do that. If that's what you want to do with pro wrestling right now and you want to get your fix in one way or the other, do it. Especially when or you they go to take... cheek you and they get you with the molars. Oh, it's rough. <laughs> the canines. Oh. Or you can just kind of take a step back, cleanse your palate, you know, get on some... Like you mentioned, Carney Land. There's there's wrestling related stuff that's good. There's Carney Land. There's Glow on on Netflix yet, which is just awesome. I can't recommend that enough. I still if you haven't been keeping up, two. yeah, I I just finished it and it's just great. Uh, if you haven't watched Dark Side of the Ring yet, or 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 just maybe a handful of episodes, any episode is a good one. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. So there's so much wrestling related stuff going on that I think I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh there's definitely enough content to keep me satisfied when I'm not watching the in-ring stuff, which is still surprising to me to this day. Like I thought I was going to be in it regardless, but I just find it so hard to care. And despite how I personally feel about WWE's product currently, there's always the WWE Network to catch up on any past 
amazing shows, or even if you just want to go back and watch one match from this and one match from that and kind of make your own little booyah base of pro wrestling. Southpaw wrestling is something I want to go back and rewatch again, especially after Carnyland. Exactly. I mean, and you got the, the time to do it. They got, you know, Stone Cold's Broken Ranch Challenge thing on there that I, like I said, I've, I've watched uh, probably 50% of them, and they're all kind of somewhat interesting, but this one with Ric Flair I thought was really good. That's the latest one they got, and I, I recommend that one. He really opens up. There's stuff out there. It's just some of it you got to look for. Now, don't take Fat Max's words literally. We all know Ric Flair is not shy for cutting and bleeding, but this is a different kind of cutting and bleeding. Oh, yeah. Some of you might find it a little ugly. (laughs) It's good to see that side of him, though. Mm -hmm. The human side of of what some would consider the goat in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Some would consider him the goat. That's some not necessarily being pasty. <laughs> no, not necessarily Fat Mac either. Even even Flair on that podcast puts uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Hulk Hogan as um, the best wrestlers of all time. And he's like, you know, and after that, you got the me and the and you got Sean and Hunter and Brad. He said, I mean, you can throw anybody in after that, but he's he's just says straight up, he's like the best in wrestling. Maybe not the best mat technicians or the best this or that, but the best just in wrestling, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Austin and Hulk Hogan, hands down. And I, I agree with him 100% on that. I'm really surprised they didn't say The Rock in that sentence. You know, I don't think The Rock is. I think he's one of the best in Hollywood, and he probably used pro wrestling the best as anybody ever did. But I don't know. You look at even Stone Cold, I guess you can say, but you look at Rock and he had what? four, three years, like, uh, like as a, a main top guy. Yeah. Which is about what Austin had, too, but Austin was outselling Rock and everything. The Rock never started outselling Austin until he started making movies, and yeah. then he really <laughs> <Sold> outsold him. <laughs> outsold, yeah. sold out, he did it all. Exactly. <laughs> uh. I guess... I guess we can start getting into the show, Pasty. Coming at you hot with another This Week in Pro Wrestling History. We broke down This Week in Pro Wrestling Current, so time to bust out the history. Not too far back this time, we're going to May 19th, 1996, Pasty, in Madison Square Garden. Shawn Michaels defeated Diesel in a steel cage match to retain the WWF Championship in the main event. On the undercard, we've seen the Godwins, Henry and Phineas O, defeat the Body Donnas. Skip and zip, baby. Skip and zip. Um, and they ended up winning the WWF Tag Team Championships from them. Um, Skip was Bob Holly. I'm trying to remember who Zip was, and it's really escaping me now. But With a name like Skip Zip, you'd was... have to assume it's Crash. <laughs> <laughs> or Spike Dudley. <laughs> right. Uh um, the Ultimate Warrior also defeated Owen Hart on that show. So uh, a pretty solid, uh, um, you know, house show. This wasn't a, a Raw or a, a pay-per-view or nothing. It was just a house show. Ooh. There were no cameras rolling or nothing. But but none of those matches was the story of the day, Pasty. Because following the conclusion of the main event, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, Diesel, and Hunter Hearst Helmsley all gathered inside the steel cage and shared a big old group hug presenting perhaps the most blatant in-ring breach of kayfabe in WWE history, which has since been dubbed the Curtain Call. That's crazy. I I don't think I knew that that was a house show before now, and now I wonder why the hell anybody was so pissed off about it. Yeah, well, it was all much ado about nothing. I mean, hell, Vince McMahon gave them the okay before it happened. Right. You know, it wasn't a... wasn't like they went out there and yeah. And nobody would have cared if it wasn't for, you know, one astute fan sneaking in a video camera and recording it and in shitty grainy quality for everybody to watch (laughs) moving on. Must've been a big ass camera too in 96. (laughs) At the same time though, if that fan hadn't done that, just think of how many documentaries 
would be losing that giant piece that has yeah. been in every documentary for Michaels, um, Hall, Nash, Triple H, the DX, Monday the Monday Night, Night, Wars. Night Wars. Yeah, exactly. Like it's <laughs> been used over and over ad nauseum. And at the time, people just threw up a big to do. <laughs> But, you know, they were all friends, and they weren't going to be seeing each other for a long time, you know, despite the fact that, you know, whether you could – you could still talk to people from other promotions, but you weren't going to be traveling with them every day. You are going to be in different cities. You are going to be in different parts of the country. You were going to – you weren't going to see each other all the time, and, and they loved each other, man. They did. Probably a little bit more than anybody knows, really. Like uh, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, I think. I think after watching that Chris Benoit special, I think there's a little bit more between those two. <laughs> right? He, he showed him God, but I don't think it was the Bible. <laughs> I don't think it was, buddy. I don't think it was. I mean, you can't blame. I mean, wrestlers on the road get lonely too, and the only people who know what you're going through is the people going through it with you. Well, it's like you know, back in the day, the the sailors on ships. It's like it wasn't gay. It was just you wanted to. You had to get off somehow, right? Same with these pro wrestlers. They're all stuck together, traveling together, staying in hotels together. Mm. What are you going to do? And in case anybody's wondering and doesn't know the, the full history of a lot of this, even though it's been gone over millions of times, and you're wondering, why wasn't Sean Waltman there? Wasn't he one of their buddies? He was. He was out with injury and uh, wasn't there at the taping and sure saved himself because he probably would have been right up there with Hunter Hearst Helmsley as getting shit on because he was a nobody back then. Yeah. And Michaels was a main eventer. So I think it worked out good for Sean to miss that one. But <laughs> nonetheless, it things turned out okay for Triple H, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. All he, in all. He's in a better place now. He survived. <laughs> he made good with it. Woo! And now he's probably a... Uh, Wherever you are, I hope that Triple H is in his home. Yes. And for more on that, let's turn it over to Billy Corgan. Hello, everyone. William Patrick Corgan here, president of the National Wrestling Alliance. I hope wherever you are, I'm in my home in Chicago. And I'd like to thank you for joining this special edition of Power, which we call Superpower, a completely loaded show. I got to see his house, man. Oh, he sure is selling it. He sure is fucking <laughs> It's got to be a great up. place. I hope wherever you are, I'm at home in my golden <laughs> palace in Chicago of all places. William Corgan's up there in his ivory towers. <laughs> Isn't Chicago getting flooded out right now? <laughs> no, it's Detroit. Detroit. Oh. Detroit. Detroit could only improve being flooded out. <laughs> fresh water it's like clean water uh, for everyone to drink i was just gonna i was just gonna say something but uh <laughs> i either won't say it or i'll wait till after the uh, first news story to say it but first i want to break kayfabe here as we got quiet to listen to the token jrr i thought my stomach was just rumbling loud and i was like oh my gosh i need to eat and then i stopped and i put my hand on my tummy to feel it and it's my dog snoring <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad it wasn't me because it sounded just rough. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm eating myself from the inside out." But that was my dog snoring, so it's her problem, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, and with that, I guess it is time to step into this week's savage sentinel. Or shortage sentinel, depending on how you want to go about it. It's another shorty, baby. It's another Ooh, shorty. It is. Uh, and of course, we're going to start off with the uh, story of the week, I guess. I think so. To say It's the mo thing I've heard the most about this week, that's for sure. Well, and it was ongoing this week, I guess. Yes. You know. <laughs> for, for, what, 12 hours-ish? Oh, God, no. It was uh, for like three days. Oh, shit. I don't yeah, know, I man. It was... Quarantined at home, you lose track of time. I might be wrong, but I think it was like a couple days. I thought it was on Monday, maybe Tuesday, and they didn't find him till Wednesday. I don't know. Again, it's yeah, like you said, with quarantine, may maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was just all. <laughs> maybe it all happened in one day. It was six hours, Fuck. Fat Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, and of course, what we're talking about is Shad Gaspard. <laughs> 